So when you start applying for the data science roles, it is very, very important that you are well prepared for the data science interview before you go for that interview. Because I have seen that many people, they are not even well prepared. And because of that, they are not able to answer the questions in a structural way. So in today's video, we'll discuss about the interview questions related to data science role, which were asked recently in Cognizant Data Science interview. Now let's get started with this. So the first question asked in the interview was explain the precision and recall. So precision and recall are the evaluation matrix which are used for evaluating classification models in machine learning. Now let's say that you are building a machine learning model for predicting whether person has a cancer or not based on certain health parameters. Now for such model when you are building that model recall is more important uh, than precision. Now, in order to get precision and recall, first of all, you have to un understand the confusion matrix. Now, let's say that these are our original labels and these are the predicted labels by the machine learning model. And these are the original labels. Let's say we have healthy people and we have people with cancer. So let's assume that in our test data set, we have 10,000 people which are healthy and 1000 people are having cancer so out of this 10000 people let's say that our model has predicted 9800 people to be healthy and 200 people are having cancer and out of these 1000 people let's say model's prediction is 300 people are healthy and 700 people are having cancer now in this case precision basically represents out of the people which are predicted to have cancer how many people are actually having cancer. So there are 900 people which are predicted to have cancer. And out of those 900 people, only 700 people actually have cancer. So 700 by 900 basically becomes your precision for a class of people having cancer. Because in this case, case this class is important. So we need to get good results on class of people having cancer because we are building this machine learning model to predict whether people have cancer or not. So this is your precision. Recall represents out of the total positive examples, how many examples model is able to predict correctly. So total positive examples are 1000 out of those 700 examples are predicted correctly. So 700 by 1000 becomes your recall value in this particular case. Now the next question is what is the goal of AB testing? See AB testing is used whenever you have to evaluate two different versions of the same product. Let's say that you are having version A of the website and this is the website currently getting used and your internal team has came up with the new version of the website and you want to evaluate which of those versions is better. Let's say that there is new version B which has came up and you want to know which of these versions is better with respect to let's say a conversion rate. So which version is getting better conversion rate, better revenue. Let's say that on a daily basis, there are 10,000 customers which are visiting the website. Now, in case of A-B testing, what you will do is out of those 10,000 customers, randomly 5,000 customers would be redirected to version A and 5,000 customers would be redirected to version B. And then on a daily basis, let's say that you are doing this daily for 30 days, right from day one to day 30. On a daily basis, a conversion rate would be calculated for both the versions of the website. And then if you cal if you compare those two values or if you compare the means of those two values using t-test, you would know whether there is a significant difference, statistically significant difference between version A and version B. And then based on that, you can make a decision. So this is the goal of A-B testing to identify which of the version is giving better results. The next question was on PCA. How can we select number of components from PCA output? So PCA basically stands for principal component analysis. It's a type of machine learning algorithm, which is used for dimensionality reduction. Now, when you apply PCA, what you will do is based on the data, based on the feature matrix that you have, first of all, you'll have to calculate the covariance matrix. And on that covariance matrix, eigenvalue decomposition is applied. So eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition is applied on the covariance matrix. So in this case, eigenvector basically represents a new coordinate axis that you are trying to find out. 
and eigen values basically represents the amount of variance explained by that particular component now let's say that in input data you have 100 components you have 100 features in your input data and after applying pca you would get 100 components and every component would also have a corresponding eigen value which would represent how much variance is explained by that particular component now let's say that out of 100 components if you select the first 45 components and that is explaining 90% variance of the data 90% information from the data then that is good enough so in that case you can select the first 45 components and you are basically then reducing the dimension of the data from 100 dimension to 45 dimensional data now how many components you should select depends on the how much variance those components are able to explain so generally in the industry it is recommended that after applying pca the number of components that you select should be able to explain at least 90 percent variance from the data and this is how you can select the number of components the next question was on bias variance trade-off so explain bias variance trade-off so this bias variance trade-off comes into picture when you are trying to build a machine learning model now let's say that this is the error curve that we get after building a machine learning model and on the x-axis let's say i have a model complexity so if you have a model which is less complex then in that case you would get a high error if you have a model which is highly complex then in that case also you would get high error on the test data now this kind of scenario is called as the bias variance trade-off so if you have a model which is basically having high complexity in that case your bias would be low let's say this is your bias curve and if you have a model which is having high complexity in that case your variance would be on a higher side this is a variance curve so when you have a model which is highly complex that can result in overfitting and that's why those kind of models won't give acceptable results on unseen data and you're trying to find optimal model which is having a balanced bias and variance and that would come when you have a balanced complexity in your machine learning model so this is nothing but a bias variance trade-off so if you try to build highly complex model it might give you good results on training data but it won't give you acceptable results on unseen data due to overfitting the next question was on multicollinearity. what is multicollinearity? so multicollinearity is a scenario where let's say that you have multiple features let's say that i have x1 x2 x3 these three features in my data and i'm trying to predict output let's say the output is insurance price which i'm trying to predict and let's say x1 is the weight of a person x2 is the bmi of a person and x3 is let's say a cholesterol value now weight and bmi both of these values are highly correlated so when you have a scenario where two or more features are having high correlation with each other and they are also impacting the output that kind of a scenario is called as the multicollinearity. and whenever you have a multicollinearity, and let's say you are building a machine learning model like linear regression in that case the coefficients of linear regression that you would get from such a model which has multicollinear features won't be interpretable let's say that this is the equation of your model theta 0 plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 plus theta 3 x3 now in this case feature x1 and x2 both are going to compete in deciding the final result deciding your y and that's why these theta values won't remain interpretable because both of those features have high correlation with each other and they're also impacting the output so such kind of scenario is called as multicollinearity. so these were the questions which were asked in data science interview in cognizant so i hope you guys got clarity around the questions and how you can answer those questions correctly now, if you're preparing for a data science interview, my recommendation is you definitely prepare well for all the machine learning and statistics questions, along with all the projects that you're going to add on your CV. Because if you perform confidently in the interview, that would definitely increase the chances of getting a successful outcome. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and keep preparing for the interviews. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.